Hello, I'm Philip Russom. I'm a research director at TDWI, and I'm here with William McKnight. William is the president of McKnight Consulting Group. Good to see you. Good to be here. Hey, listen, I know you have a new book out. I do. Congratulations. That's great. And uh, I saw a segment of it, and uh, there's a lot in there, a lot of great information about data management. And I thought uh, maybe we could just talk for a while about some of the data management tips and trends you look, that you talk about in the book. Sure. So uh, in your book, you explain how important information uh, is to business today, and uh, just uh, why is that? Why do businesses really need information to uh, just to run the business or to succeed, or what? Yeah, I mean, if you dig behind any strategic objective of a business, whether it's stated or otherwise, mm -hmm. you find the need for information to bring to bear on that decision. And so today, it's not about your everyday low prices or your efficient supply chain. It's about the information that you use in, mm -hmm. in running your business. And that means that you can't treat customers uh, uh, as a whole bulk of customer, but as individuals, same with products, same with your stores, same with whatever it is that you do, your, your healthcare initiatives and that sort of thing. They all are specific mm -hmm. to the individual. So you have to learn about the individual. A lot of that type of information just permeates the whole company because a lot of the initiatives inside of companies need this kind of information. Yeah, it's almost ironic. You, like you said, you need uh, sort of big picture aggregated data to understand your customers as a group, but you also need uh, highly granular data to understand customers as individual people. So, um, also, I know the book has quite a bit uh, in there about uh, constructing a fairly comprehensive information architecture. So, for both aggregated and detailed data, other matters. What 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 are some what are things people need to set as their primary goals when designing and building an information uh, infrastructure? Well, I think they need to think about getting their own, getting all their data, and getting all of the data that is possible that they can get their arms around, and getting that under management. So much data we have just left flow through the inf to the organization and we haven't done anything about it. We haven't pulled it under management or learned how to utilize it to capitalize on business gain. And so one thing I'm constantly consulting about is to grow the data science within your organization because those companies that actually have strong data science yeah. and the ability to use that information, and of course the information is available to them through the information architecture, they're, they're the ones that are going to succeed in the next you know, five to ten years mm -hmm. because we're in the information age. It's all about information. We've got to get it under management. It really is the information age, and uh, all you're talking about there is, is, is quite involved, isn't it? So there's a lot of technology, but also you're, you're talking about people and their success. Seems like a lot of people in process adjust, adjustments as well. So what do you think about that? I mean, is, are there uh, sort of data management-oriented business adjustments that need to be made? Well, absolutely. We can't be dogmatic about, okay, here's the data in the form that we thought of mm -hmm. that we think that you're going to need. We have to work with the business community to understand what the requirements are, but furthermore, we have to be leaders and go beyond that and see where things are going, where the technology is taking us, where uh, the possibilities are, and do that kind of possibilities thinking, and then translate that on a regular basis into information architecture, which today means so much more than what it meant five to ten years ago. We have so many more possibilities. It's not not about the big data warehouse with or everything's going into it it's a relational database and that's where all reporting will be done from it's not about that anymore it's about having a heterogeneous environment and having the data flow to the right platform for that data that's good that's good and uh, besides the information uh, also sort of reworked and uh, retransformed, et cetera, to fit business purposes, the way you would any material in a business, right? Data is just another asset. So, uh, I mean, that's a lot and it's evolving, but uh, it also seems to be evolving faster and faster. And so, uh, uh, especially at TDWI, we, we've looked at the demand and a lot of users are demanding training from us, publications about agile methodologies uh, for a wide variety of stuff in our space. So agile design for the warehouse, agile data integration, uh, agile uh, building of reports or analyses. Are, are you seeing similar need for agility uh, around uh, core disciplines in data management? Absolutely. Um, agility is, we have so much work to, d to be done uh -huh. that uh, we have to adopt uh, agility, agile practices in yeah. order to get more efficient. And so what I always say is in the development process, which is the process of building the data stores and bringing the data in, cleansing that data, making it available, we use agile techniques like Scrum to actually 
change every two weeks our direction, pull the stories in that we're going to work on for the next two weeks, actually accomplish those stories, and build up the information architecture one step at a time in alignment with user requirements. But the BI side of things, we're adopting more of a self-service business intelligence approach, mm -hmm. whereby we're asking the user community to step up to more, and in some cases, that's easy. In some cases, we have to lead them along, but we're asking the user community to do more with that side of things, with the information access, yep. and that's very dynamic. So that is something that we support them on, but we're encouraging the knowledge workers of the organization to use more information in the things that they do. Yeah, that's very good. Well, let me change the subject a little bit. You know, uh, there's quite a bit of hype in recent years about so-called big data, and that's definitely a data management issue, isn't it? Yes. It's got its own challenges, it's got its own unique requirements, and it's got its own unique content that we should all think about leveraging to get some advantage for the organization. So in your book, it seemed to me, um, you were talking about big data, not in a hyped fashion at all, but you're, you seem to be very pragmatic and you think there's uh, considerable business value to be gotten out of it. What, what do you think? Oh, exactly. I, I think I take a balanced approach to big data. I think it's going to be here with us to stay. I don't think it's a fad. I think it is actually where competitive advantage will be wrought over the next five to ten years because sort of if you don't have the data warehouse and the relational data act together, you know, well, yes, you have to do that, but that's fully expected that you have that today. It's the big data the company where companies are mining new territory, getting into new uh, technologies in a lot of cases, and new types of data, and learning how to utilize that data. That's what's setting companies apart in the next five to ten years. So it's important, but there's so much work to be done there that there's not going to be time, and it's not right, to go back and apply big data technologies to all the things that we've done and that we have implemented. That's right. there the database class of technologies, yep. which is what we've been utilizing for the past 30 years, is still, it's evolved and it's still appropriate for most of the things that we have, we're utilizing it for. The big data technologies like Hadoop and all the NoSQL databases are, are databases, well they're not really databases, they're systems that are meant to manage the unstructured data. All right, very good. Yeah, and I agree with you, we can't go ripping and replacing older data management solutions. Uh, even though there are newer technologies, some of them designed for big data or analytics. And uh, yeah, at TDWI, we see the, kind of the new stuff coming in and coexisting with the older stuff uh, yes. without contradiction. Um, you know, let's go off script just for a moment, because uh, uh, one of the excerpts I saw in your book uh, was talking about uh, coordinating efforts across data management disciplines. And uh, TDWI, when we look at our members and other people, we sometimes see them doing data quality in a vacuum in one group. There'll be a totally different group that probably does data integration for the warehouse, and yet another one that does data integration for the operational yeah. Uh, yeah. applications. And then uh, there's some guys doing replication in their own group. So. You know, we, we see a trend. Some organizations are pulling together these disparate teams. Some of them go with team structures like the Competency Center, or some people like to call it the Center of Excellence. So we see some effort to try and better unify teams and efforts and also uh, solutions. So a lot of times it's not just a data quality solution. It's, it's actually a data flow, and it's got some data integration mixed into it yeah. with some data yeah. quality, maybe some master data management. Who knows? Mm -hmm. that's, that's really a... Uh, that's kind of crystal ball, isn't it? I think that's where we may be going, but we're, I don't think we're there. So what do you think about kind of this unified approach to uh, the different disciplines? Yeah, I, I mean, one of the things that I talk about in my training, I do in my consulting, is try to get the group to have some common terminology. So when we talk about what is data quality, what is data integration, what is all of these aspects of information management, I, I cover that in the book and I try to explain things in a way that I'm not putting forward new definitions, but what I'm doing is I'm trying to give people the, the, uh, the hooks yep. so that they can go beyond and see how all these other people are referring to that thing and still still be in an architected world. And I try to move things forward in an architected direction. Right. And so, yes, I mean, to me that means that a, a manager in charge of building a data warehouse or building a Hadoop cluster or whatever, they have the resources that they can deploy at getting that work done under their control. And that's your data integration layer, that's your data management layer, and things like that, data quality. All right, very good, very good. Um, well, you know, at TDWI, we've had a, uh, an event for years that we, call the, uh, uh, that we call the Forum for Master Data Quality and Governance, and 
we put those together in the event because we do often see users unifying those practices. You know, for a lot of people, uh, master data management is kind of a semantic approach to data quality, and they can use a lot of the same techniques and a lot of the same skills. Yeah. Kind of makes sense yeah. for the same people to work on both the data quality and master data projects, and a lot of times they're working on data integration projects too. Sure. And then, uh, kind of the kind of the um, kind of the guiding force for a lot of these people is data governance and things that go with it, like data stewardship. So we're seeing we're seeing you know we're seeing a real effort to kind of unify that stuff, and that's why we have the event for it. So uh, so I want to thank you. You're going to speak in our next uh, uh, forum on uh, master data quality and governance. So I I just want to uh, do you have anything to say about that that combination of disciplines? Does that makes sense to you. Well. By definition, master data mm -hmm. is separated and collected in a separate location so that it can be distributed on a real-time basis to all the subscribing systems that need it. And so therefore, it's a highly leverageable mm -hmm. system within, within the family of systems out right, there. And right. so because of that leverage, it must have data quality. Now, what's data quality? You know, data quality is the absence of intolerable defects. It's defects that the company cannot tolerate. We're not talking about 100% oh, right, right. data quality, but we're talking about getting it to the point where it is usable throughout the organization and people don't have to stop and question mm -hmm. the quality of the data before right. they can begin to use it. Yes. And master data management, very leverageable structure throughout the organization. So that's a place that you really need to attend to data quality by definition. Yeah, very good point, and I believe that. So those of you watching, I want to encourage you to attend uh, the next TDWI Executive Forum on Master Data Quality and Governance. I know that's a tongue-tying title, isn't it? Long one. So I'm going to say it again. The TDWI Executive Forum on Master Data Quality and Governance. And that will happen on Monday and Tuesday, September 22nd to 23rd, 2014. And uh, that, that event will be co-located with our World Conference uh, in San Diego. You know, for years we've been going to the Manchester Grand Hyatt there. Right. It's a beautiful hotel, beautiful location on the marina in San Diego. So it's a great location for you to come uh, for the forum on master data, et cetera, but also bring the rest of your crew and uh, they can take training sessions and do all kinds of other stuff in the World Conference as well. So again, that's uh, September 22nd and 23rd in San Diego, the TDWI Executive Forum on Master Data Quality and Governance. Hope to see you there.